So good evening, everybody. I hope you can see me here and also hear me. Um, welcome to this um, session of afternoon session of the virtual dev days on the topic of bridging V2 to fire. So we've got three greeting statements. That's probably good late uh, morning Americas and the US. It's good evening in Europe. And I think in Asia, it would be late at night or early morning, wherever you are. Um, my name is Gusa Vela, and I'll be hosting the session. And our guest today is Hans Buitendijk. He's Director of Interoperability Strategy at Cerner, and he's been an Activator 7 member for uh, over 30 years. And yeah, uh, without further ado, I'll pass on to him to start a session on bridging V2 to Fire. If I have the mute button in the right spot, if it's correct, just to check, you should see my screen that has the uh, fire dev days and bridging V2 to fire. That should see, be visible. Is that the case? Yeah. Yes. That okay, is. then sound and uh, screen works. So uh, really appreciate the opportunity uh, today to uh, uh, to talk uh, with everybody. Um, and going to be uh, um, going through a couple of things, a little bit uh, 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 more in uh, HL7. Uh, orders and observation is where I'm uh, co-chair at the moment, and that's also where the project um, uh, to uh, drive version two to fire mapping, uh, where that's uh, owned and uh, and is housed. Even though it uh, it uh, involves more than just the, uh, uh, the the domain space of orders and observation, but that's where it happened to land. Um, <clears throat> so what we're trying to do today is uh, is get a little bit better understanding what the project goals and the approach are. Some of you may already be more familiar with it; others are the first time. Others are in between and just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. What are we trying to achieve and what's already available from a resources perspective to help uh, anybody uh, interested in, uh, in mapping uh, to be able to, uh, uh, to do a start with that? Um, and then what are some of the next steps that we're currently working on to, uh, uh, to progress? Um, so in that uh, uh, context, let's start with the goals. And the goals are really around mapping all data that is known to be transmitted using HL7 version two into HL7 Fire. Um, so the key points there are all data known to be transmitted. What we're trying to achieve is not map everything that version two would allow you to uh, communicate. We are looking at what's actually used um, and use that as the starting point. So whatever messages, whatever segments within those messages, whatever fields and within the fields, the uh, the components that are actually used, that's what we're looking at. So we, it's not gonna be 100%. I have no idea what the percentage will be. Guess 30, 40% of what the standard would allow you to do. Um, but uh, uh, it would be everything that we are made aware of. Um, in that sense, uh, we are doing more than what FHIR does. FHIR looks at 80% of use and other 20% leaves it to extensions and otherwise. We are really looking at actual use. Um, and that might mean that we need to look in fire and say there's nothing there uh, and we have to uh, accommodate that as well. Um, focus on V2 to fire is what our initial focus is because we believe that most of the use will be there is a V2 message uh, and as it's flying around, uh, uh, somebody would like to tap into it uh, and then transpose it into something fire. Uh, we're using fire message as our target to really make sure that that's uh, that we have a good goal and that we have everything that might be used. But if somebody wants to go from V2 to a, a repository, wants to switch over into services and do something uh, that way, that's fine too. Uh, we just want to make sure we have the full scope. And in the future, at some point, we'll look at the other direction. We know that it's not a one-on-one -on -one reverse direction, uh, depending on where you are in fire. Uh, the context of what you're doing may yield uh, a, a quite a different uh, perspective on where you need to have it land in V2 and vice versa as well. So that's that's the second uh, round. So in scope, what we're doing, we are developing a number of uh, uh, CSV spreadsheets. That's really what we're currently using to manage the mapping definitions that then can in turn be converted into concept maps. Um, where they can be expressed in fish, XML, JSON, Turtle, 
Um, but concept map is the way that we really try to get it to a, uh, to a, uh, a easily computable uh, format. But there are people already using the D CSV files uh, directly um, and work with that. We also like to get to a concept map editor so that some of the things that we're doing right now in Google Spreadsheets, um, uh, that we can replace that with a, uh, a more formal editor um, uh, that is targeted to it that, that sits right on top of the concept map and take out the .csv files. We're not there yet, but that it's in scope of the project. Um, we are looking at the conventions. How do we document uh, the, uh, the mapping that we agree to? What are some of the condition logics that uh, need to be applied? And I'll demonstrate that in a little bit what that looks like. And we're looking at a fire bundle of type message. That's our main goal. Uh, and uh, anything beyond that that you would like to use in fire, uh, you can obviously do, uh, but we're not trying to get into that space as much. The uh, uh, Part of the, the thought is that something starts as a V2 message, might want to go through as a fire message, um, and is everything in play to achieve that? And if you want to do less than that, that's fine too, and put it in a repository, or you want to switch paradigms, that's fine too. But that's not what we're explicitly addressing. So what's out as a result of that, is that the actual uh, uh, convergence uh, or the uh, uh, conversion uh, uh, using a mapping tool, that's up to the user of it. Uh, so there are a variety of different parties that are, uh, are providing mapping tools. Um, they may use uh, the CSV files, they may use the concept maps, they may, may automatically convert them into their internal uh, uh, model uh, uh, logic, or they may do that manually, however they wish to do that, to put, get it into an operating mapping tool. That's for the implementer to decide. Uh, and already stated transport targets or uh, whatever you like to do. Map validation is in a way out as well. We are doing some things to validate the maps, um, uh, but you can use uh, the fire validator for it. And there's some work uh, in, in flight on, on content to make sure everything is, uh, is appropriate. Um, but that is not the main goal of the project itself. That's where others implementers are creating tools around that to do that. So the approach that we're taking, we are starting with the most common messages. There is a, uh, a handful of those, um, uh, eight or, or 10 or so uh, that, uh, that are in place. Um, and that would touch on a lot of the segments that are reused across a variety of messages. Uh, so ADTA01, ORM001, ORU, VXU, those are the main ones that we're drawing from. There's already work going on with uh, scheduling, SIU, uh, we are looking at OML, uh, so there's a variety of things that we are uh, tackling around it. But that's the core that we want to say is that if we can do that, and for the most, uh, the main segments that they use in there, then we got a good body of work to start with. Um, the second part is that project team members, anybody interested, uh, contributes what they know of what's being used, and we only map what we know is being used. If somebody something is unknown, we leave it blank on the mapping. But if somebody tomorrow shows up and say, hey, I really would like that to be done. So for example, right now there's some, uh, uh, some interest uh, in a couple of uh, areas like that. We will then pull it in because now we know it's used. Um, we looked at a couple of different ways of getting at it. Um, top down, start with the messages and then work our way into data type. There were some that suggest, no, don't do that. Start with the data type and then work your way up. After we tried both, we really ended up center out is kind of what's going on. Yes, we use the messages as our um, uh, initial, what are the segments in scope? But then it's mostly that we're starting with the segments, map those, and then understand in the context of the messages being used, where the variations might be. And then we may need to have another flavor of the mapping because it's used somewhere else or somewhere else in the, in the, in the, uh, uh, in the message. Uh, so it's a little bit of back and forth. You'll see us working on the segment and say, oh, well, as a result, we need to dive into the data type. Oh, we need to go back. And, and add some logic to the message. Uh, so it's it's truly a, uh, a multi-directional approach that we're taking. Uh, another important point is that in the V2 space, the V2 is done cumulatively. So when we say is that we're mapping V2 to fire, we're mapping the cumulative V2 uh, standard into a specific fire uh, version, R4. Um, <clears throat> then over time, we're going to look at R5 and then R6, but it's the main uh, uh, versions on the fire side, but it always will be the most current uh, version 2.9 uh, that uh, we're gonna have. 
And that allows us to effectively say is that whether something was marked as backwards compatible or is already marked as deprecated, it changed uh, from a data type that is backwards compatible into a more current one and ID is changed to a CWE, a CE is changed to, to a CNE, whatever. By looking at a cumulative, and we know that the slots are always fixed, they, they will not be used for anything else. We will have the full picture. So if you get a message, whether it's a 231, a 2.1, if somebody can find it, a 2.9 or a mix, um, by having the full set available, if something is uh, is populated, and assuming we have a map uh, defined for that, uh, because somebody said, yeah, we use it, then it will be mapped to the right thing in fire. So that's how we're approaching it, cumulative, uh, because the positions are fixed forever. Um, and we're starting with R4, but then after that R5, and then move from there. Um, we're not gonna go um, uh, uh, before that, um, and uh, we're not doing anything against the build. There's too many changes. And we do know that things uh, need to be changed because what's happening in R4, unless it's uh, normative, of which there are only two uh, resources that are normative, everything else is, uh, is as a result uh, up for a grasp. Um, R5, we will have to make changes. Um, so we're only going to look at major releases. The reason that we use spreadsheet editing, and I'll show you in a moment what that looks like, is that it's easier to actually review. There are uh, there were discussions early on, let's use fire mapping language. Very difficult to read, not uh, easy to do. Um, actually, some of the things we do in the spreadsheet might not be easily expressed in the fire mapping language. You're trying to really figure out what's going on. Uh, not a very enjoyable effort. Um, that, uh, um, when we then move it into concept map, it can over time by somebody interested to move in the direction when it's more solidified or if they want to do that internally. But from a review agreement on what's mapping, is that mapping correctly? Much easier to, uh, to look at spreadsheets and get more people involved, not only programmers, uh, but also uh, business analysts that actually understand the data. Um, comes at a downside, harder to avoid typos, although, uh, I'm not going to hold my breath on the number of typos uh, elsewhere initially. Um, but uh, um, yes, that comes with a downside that. Um, and therefore, the editing uh, uh, capabilities that we would like to see, if you have a spreadsheet style format uh, that has the editing capabilities and the validations that, uh, that we can work with, that will obviously be uh, uh, the ideal world. We're not there. So it's a little bit of give and take, uh, but that's where we landed. Uh, so if you're looking at that, then there is a, a little bit of a, a flow that we have here. We have the spreadsheets. That's where we start. Uh, the link to that is right in here. I'm going to open it up in a moment, drag it across, and you'll see what it uh, further looks like. That then is being ingested into uh, the, uh, uh, the GitHub that lives here, uh, where it's available. And that's then being used to uh, uh, generate um, uh, the uh, implementation guide. That's also the link to that. that uh, that's the list that we have. Um, so into uh, the uh, um, uh, into GitHub is where we're updating the respective text text uh, information uh, that's in here, but the actual maps are coming from these spreadsheets. Some people have taken this and already siphoned that off and start to work with it. Others are looking at the uh, uh, the data once it is in here to then uh, uh, pick it up, um, and then there's always uh, uh, something you can do here. So those are the three main components that we are maintaining. Uh, I'm going to jump into that for a moment that you can see a little bit better what that looks like. Uh, first, uh, let's look at the, uh, um, the spreadsheet. Um, the spreadsheet is actually this one when you land in here on the, on the link, uh, you'll see tabs for message, segment, data type, code system. Um, there are some profiles, metadata, and, uh, and other things that, uh, that we're leaving here. Ignore that for the moment. These are the four main components that we deal with. And then on each of the tabs, there's the link to the actual mapping table. So I'm going to step into a message for a moment and to a segment for a moment. Uh, I'm not going to go to the data types. You'll start to get the picture of what it looks like. And then go to code system. I'll give you one flavor as well. So if you go in here, uh, you end up in an A01 message where we are defining the structure and that was a little bit of a compromise because normally when you look at it, column C in version two is what you see. Um, uh, and that, uh, uh, that's in play. Ignore the yellow for a moment. I'll explain what's happening there. 
Um, so you'll have, uh, that's the structure. But what you start to see is that there is a slightly different uh, uh, syntax here that we use. And that helps us create a more unique identification of each row. And the other thing that you start to see happening is that you see certain um, segments appear multiple times. And the reason for that is that MSH, for example, needs to be mapped to a bundle resource. It needs to be mapped to a message header uh, resource. It needs to be mapped twice to provenance. So there are two provenance uh, entries that it needs to go to. Uh, so one MSH, it has this in, uh, in common, goes here. And by doing it this way, it's really also signaling that you can start to execute every row effectively on its own. You need to know that it all ties together, uh, but uh, that's what's happening. The other part is that you see is that um, uh, there is a uh, provenance and there's a second provenance. So we're using some of this uh, uh, indication or a third uh, that either indicates go to a different new instance or there is already an instance, uh, a third instance there that if there's something else that you need to do as well, uh, do it on the same instance, number three, that's already there. So those are the kinds of things that are in there. I'm not gonna go through all the syntax. You can go to the IG and then I will point out where that is. The yellow is more discussion in progress that is easier to do in spreadsheets to highlight, oh, we need to talk about this. We probably want to remove that or we want to do something else. So that's how you run through it. We have um, uh, information that comes from V2 uh, that's just copied for to make it easier. But then we have conditional uh, uh, logic as well that either might be narrative. Yeah, if PID 10 is for a clinical purpose, you have no idea from the message to figure that out. The parties know it. They know on their uh, interaction whether that's the case or not. So we'll provide guidance narratively or we provide guidance um, uh, in a computable statement that can be done with the data that's available in a handler format that we agree to or in a firepath uh, format uh, that some others like and it may still be augmented with narrative um, if uh, one needs to know that and then from here you then can actually jump to the specific uh, map and says that okay PID, pd1 goes to pit uh, uh, to the patient and there should have been one before here that's patient one as well because the pit goes there so I'll go to this one. Um, now you see a slightly different layout, very similar on the left. Um, now, but now we can use PID-1 as, uh, uh, as the identifier. Um, the sort order here helps to resort it as we need to. And on the right-hand side, it goes to the attribute that's associated with the resource that's listed here. So patient.identifier. That's part of the conventions that we have that we use. And here you can see is that uh, if you happen to have PID2, it goes to identifier one. If you go uh, um, in the patient uh, identifier list, uh, you go to uh, uh, identifier two, uh, if you happen to have them both. And then you have the alternate that goes to three, just to indicate is that if uh, one or the other is, uh, is, in, uh, is used, it really is identifying different, uh, different instances uh, of the identifier. But as here you also see is that uh, uh, two and four are deprecated, but we still list them. They still, if they are valued, that's where they're gonna go. Um, and then on this side, we'll then progress with a data type mapping where you can go into how, what is the data type uh, component tree that's in play. So in this case, a CX to an identifier, where does everything go? The layout will be very similar. And then lastly, um, um, I'll open this one up, is that from a vocabulary perspective, there is a standard map here. And there is the fire map on the other side. And here you already start to see is that 807 fire does not necessarily have everything that V2 has. So I'm going to have to go and say is that multiple might map to the same area. So we have an entire section on vocabulary on what to do uh, if there are no clear mappings or if you want to hold on to the original value, that there's an extension for that. Um, I'm going to go back here for a moment that I'm hoping to find uh, uh, an example. And here we find uh, at least one and there should be another one here as well. If there is an extension already existing, it will be marked in the first column in J. But if we need to do something or there's a note like we don't know what the extension is, uh, uh, local implementation in Australia or in the US, you might have different extensions for that. Figure it out. So this is narrative more. Uh, this is uh, the actual uh, um, computable uh, reference. 
Now in here, uh, there should be, if I had it right, yep. Um, you also see that in here we put in, we would like to get an extension for veteran military status because fire doesn't have it. Doesn't have it as a core attribute, doesn't have it as an extension, yet it's being used. So we're also using this then to start to figure out we need to request extensions. And that's in, in progress right now on a number of these to say, we need to get an extension and then we can move it to the left. So that's a nutshell, the, uh, the spreadsheets that you can work through. GitHub, I'm not going to go in too much. Um, uh, you can explore that further, but I will drag across the, um, um, the uh, actual IG where we have the mappings available, um, that there is an index, there are the messages, the segments. Um, and so when you look at that, I'm gonna to go to MSH. That was one that we're looking at. I have it available in narrative in the same format. I have it in XML, JSON, Turtle, and I can get in Fire shorthand, a couple of uh, things in the, uh, in the build that are not working correctly. So you might not totally get there. You will be able to get there by going to GitHub directly. Um, so, that's the layout that you then get and that you can step through where it's available and uh, in a publisher form, publishable format. It's not yet published, but that is what the format would look like. So progressing then, um, we have these different uh, uh, maps that are out there, just uh, highlighted uh, a number of those. Uh, and then we have a sample that uh, we have a series of messages uh, and let me just uh, from the uh, uh, drag that across. Uh, we have in here, there's the link uh, that's below there uh, that we have started to accumulate a number of sample messages that then different parties can test out, figure out what works and that they where they're willing to share that to have it available. So we can use that to validate, to compare, see what we're missing, uh, issues that are being raised. And from that, uh, this is one example where somebody, um, in this case, Google, uh, they created from the ADT message their interpretation of the rules. So then we use the combination of the sample message, the output, and uh, uh, then we can use that to go back and forth in our uh, uh, deliberations, what it should look like. Uh, so from that perspective, uh, there are uh, some tools that are starting to evolve that can look at the, um, um, at the, at the transformations that we're making. Are they just in principally valid? Uh, Besides the, the fire validator that can be used, that is just a generic, hey, is this a proper bundle uh, uh, a statement that we have here? Then there are some other rules that we can apply uh, that we can run through to understand, do we have uh, direct transforms that are uh, okay? Uh, can we use that indirectly? Uh, can we use it some other places that we know that the data is not correct? Um, but we are, uh, during the, um, um, uh, the process, uh, for those V2 to fire validators specifically, we are using the manual approach that we take on the left-hand side here. Uh, my favorite or your favorite uh, uh, um, uh, viewer for a V2 message, you have the uh, output uh, on the fire side and we have the map and we uh, are frequently going through this combination and say, we got a message, somebody generated something out of it um, that uh, looks good or mm, something is wrong in the either uh, the uh, 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 the message output, or it leads us to a discussion saying, well, actually, uh, the uh, the mapping is not correct. That doesn't make sense, or it's missing something, whatever. So this is an area that there's still a lot to be done, but that's being worked on as well to help us validate that they're accurate from a syntax perspective, from uh, that perspective. But whether it's right, uh, that it's mapping to the right uh, um, um, fire uh, component, that's all part of the spreadsheet work that we're doing to make sure that that's what we're expressing that. So what we have in mind right now from a next steps perspective, um, in September, uh, we want to go uh, to a, a ballot that is not on the, on the layout that we've done before, but with the ballot feedback from then, the work being done and all the cleanup going on, we think that we still have a shot at September, that all our uh, feedback, all the ballot feedback, the JIRAs, the uh, comments inside the spreadsheet, that on that body of work, we can say, yes, that's something that we are willing to go for for an STU release one uh, uh, publication. Um, <clears throat> if we don't make it, we rather than have uh, uh, um, uh, that we push it out, but we really would like to get there so that that initial bonus of work, that that can start to be published and then we're going to just keep on expanding it with additional messages, segments, et cetera, et cetera. 
Uh, depending on how that in the ballot goes, uh, we may need to reballot because uh, of the feedback. Uh, and then uh, uh, hopefully we can publish that uh, by mid 2022 as the definitive um, STU. So still uh, uh, subject to, uh, to change, but that we can do that. And at some point in time, then the, uh, the initial round can become normative that it really is, that's what you're supposed to use when you go from a V2 message to fire. And we all recognize that you've seen one V2 implementation, you've seen one. So your local implementation may vary, may require different uh, uh, approaches uh, to make that uh, happen. And that's all understood, but that's the one that the standard would, uh, would go for. Um, so that's uh, uh, in a nutshell uh, and in a uh, review what we are trying to, to, to achieve. So um, we are looking at getting all V2 components that are, are being used to map to fire, create extensions uh, where we need to, um, uh, to uh, accommodate that so that uh, rather than everybody creating their own extension for what they're running into, that we have a body of work that everybody can reuse. So there's consistency there. We're doing it from V2 to fire. Uh, uh, first, to make sure that uh, that we got the full scope uh, available and doing that for a message. Um, and that we are really jumping back and forth a little bit between segments and messages and data types to really cover everything we need to do. It's a con constant iterative uh, uh, process. Uh, and the next step that we uh, are going to get it uh, um, uh, in ballot and that should have said content ballot in September. So that's where we uh, are at. And then we have a number of resources that, uh, um, uh, that we can work through. During the, the dev days, uh, uh, I'll be checking uh, messages as well, or you can contact me with directly. Uh, Craig Newman is the co-lead on this, um, and uh, you can reach out to him as well. Uh, we have a project page where all the information is tied together. There's a Zulp uh, stream where we can interact our meetings are Mondays and Tuesdays uh, every week. Uh, Mondays from one to two East Coast and uh, Tuesdays from 11 till uh, 12 uh, East Coast, uh, or sorry, Thursdays from 11 uh, to 12 uh, uh, East Coast. And we're running through that to make sure that, uh, um, that uh, we keep on adding to, uh, to the content and get it ready for, uh, for a formal content ballot. ballot. So with that, um, we are in the Q&A area, which I think leaves us uh, about uh, uh, 10 minutes, I believe, uh, tops uh, available for any questions, comments that you may have. So with that, um, either by way of chat, and I'll open that up uh, on my side um, as well and see whether there are any comments there. Um, I don't see the, the chat box at the moment. But anybody, any questions? Anywhere that you would like me to dive a little bit deeper, clarify a little bit more as to what we're up to? Okay, no. If that's the case, then let me just uh, um, highlight a little bit more on this side. Uh, and I'm going to put... Um, the um, where did I move it? I moved it out of the way. Not, oh, there it sits. There we go. So if we look at this spreadsheet, uh, if it's willing to be maneuvered by my arrow a little bit better rather than on its own accord. So these are some of the things that, uh, that we're running through. I'm actually going to step through a current uh, discussion uh, that we're having. Uh, and that's in the space of, uh, of some of the um, ORC uh, work, um, ORC mapping, uh, to give you a flavor of uh, what's happening there. So we are, uh, here you can see in our, um, uh, in our listing that ORC is actually mapped to Depending on the message, it's mapped to immunization uh, in the VXU message. Uh, it, it might be used to an, uh, a medication request if, the, uh, if that's what is in play. Uh, uh, we are mapping to provenance because there's some information on the ORC uh, that needs to end up in a provenance record uh, resource. Uh, it clearly goes to a service request um, on what's happening. 
And the, uh, as we get further into some of the workflow management, it will start to look at tasks as well. This is very preliminary uh, work here on, uh, uh, on ORC. Um, we expect that based on the order control uh, code uh, that's in play, that the task will be uh, updated. And depending on whether it's the cancel order, the new order, the change order, et cetera, that those interactions might change and that the task actually needs to be uh, adjusted. So you can clearly see we have multiple mappings in play. Another thing that you will notice while in here is that you see that there's an observation dash component, um, or there is in other places, uh, if you go a little bit uh, up, is that provenance for the operator or the provenance for the source. Uh, so the first part is always the resource that we're looking at. Uh, the second part uh, behind the dash is more of a, um, uh, a tiebreaker that if the, the mapping to the resource is actually different, uh, depending on the, where it comes from, MSH um, uh, going to provenance, but depending on what, uh, it needs to do something different or to a different instance, then we'll start to play with the other one just to make sure that that's a, 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 a clear, uniquely identified map. Um, so you will see that, uh, that when you open this up, um, um, actually, let me just uh, enhance uh, the, the side, is that, you can still read it as provenance, first part. That's the resource dot agent that is being mapped. Now you also see here that there's only a couple of things from MSH that are being mapped into provenance. We have to make sure as part of the mapping that the combination of resources that go to the same provenance instance at least update all the required fields. So as part of it is that some resources don't have required fields, but if there is anything that's required, that at least one of the segments, the mapping to that resource in the message ends up populating that particular um, uh, field that is required. So that's part of the validation tools that we can run through and, and sort that out, make sure that's in play. Um, but that's one of the tricky parts as well as we have multiple maps updating the same instance of the resource. So that's to, uh, uh, to see a little bit what's happening uh, all around, but then going back to the uh, ORC, uh, where we have um, had some work in progress. Uh, there we are. So now let's go into this one, unless we just resolve it. Um, so you have things in here. We have some extensions that we're trying to get to get the control code across. That will be nice uh, if you're working in some things and you want to maintain that. Um, we are working through Right now, the, in, in orders and observations, how to structure micro more consistently um, uh, and not have multiple variants in play. And uh, that just makes interoperability a little bit uh, tricky uh, to do if you really want to scale it. Uh, might work on uh, a very local uh, uh, environment, but you want to do it globally consistently and that's going to get stuck. Uh, so we'll work on that and that will drive whether we need a actually an extension for a parent placer um, uh, or whether we need to add something else to service request um, that is more permanent that we can uh, uh, manage the structure better. So those are the kinds of things we are actually uncovering on the fire side that V2 has nicely taken care of or has taken care of, not always nicely, um, but we need to figure out what's happening. Similarly with callback number. But at the same point in time, we already have an extension for the request. We currently don't have any comments uh, left in this particular map anymore. So in that regard, uh, we went through it. Uh, but if we go to, do I have pit? I did not open up PD1. I should have, because if we open that one up, that's one of the next ones that we're looking at to clean out all the, uh, the comments. So here you will see is that uh, um, we have a few more things from extensions that we need to try to work on. And we are likely going to have a couple of comments that are still sitting in here, unless that already got cleaned up, uh, that we need to, uh, uh, to work on. Last time I checked this one, we still had some comments. So I'm going to stop there again and see where there's any other uh, uh, comments that we uh, have or questions. Um, is there a chat that I'm trying to find and that I missed? Because I don't think there is on Zoom a, a chat available right now. But please uh, unmute your uh, uh, microphone if you have a question and I'd be happy to dive into something else as well.
If not, then I think we're going to start to wrap this up. Um, and uh, I will open up back to the contact information uh, that I had up earlier. That if you have any questions, please reach out. Um, if you are interested, ah, there's somebody uh, waving their hand. You want to say something? Christopher Anderson, uh, hold on. Can somebody unmute, unmute? Let's see whether I can do that. I doubt it. Has to unmute. Okay, so there's a few chats and q and A. I just wanted to let you know. So if you switch over to the other app, you can see those questions there. And we couldn't unmute before to let you know. Okay, now you're unmuted. Um, any questions? I. Not sure how handy I have. I thought that Zoom was going to have some of the questions. Um, let's see what I can get there. That might take me a moment. I would have to go over there and uh, and answer them individually. Are there any ones that want to raise the question that they put in, in Rover right here? For some reason that one is not close to me at the moment. Uh, is can anybody else uh, be unmuted? Otherwise, this will not work as well. Somebody raised their hand, and that is hold on, that works. Uh, David Ford, can you unmute uh, David Ford? Uh, yeah, my question was, how prevalent did you find the Z segment usage? And I know you said you're looking for common usage, but you know, in our environment, we see, you know, we, we need to deal with them and map them to something more, you know. Yeah, and the challenge there is that uh, Z segments are not standard. Um, right. So right. your segment, Z segment, even with the same name, and my Z segment are not necessarily the same. Um, from an HL7 perspective in this work, we are only looking at the standard V2 and the standard fire to okay. get a long way along the way. Uh, Z segments, if somebody knows of any Z segment that has been universally adopted, then we could perhaps consider that. But beyond that, that's really up to the individual implementer that has defined and is working with that Z segment to come up with their best interpretation of how it should be mapped. That's not something that we can do. Okay. Now, probably also will find is that Z segments that were created who knows how long ago, they work, they get the data across. You probably already can find uh, uh, the equivalent uh, data for a number of them, not all, uh, but for a number of them in a more current version two version. Exactly, that's what we do. So yeah. And if you look at that, so you go from your Z segment and say, hey, what do I think that would look like in V2, uh, in 2.9, let's say, uh, and then you look at, do, is there a map for version 2.9 for that official field? Where does that go? That can help you get in the right direction. If you then say is that, hey, that my Z segment field X really equates to this uh, version 2.9 uh, uh, field Y, and you don't see a map for it, we'd be interested in it because we'd be happy to map it then to help others that did the same thing with the Z segment that they can work along with that. So we would love to know about those. And you can enter those as JIRAs against the uh, the fire IG, the V2 to fire IG. Enter against that, and we they get into our queue. Great, thanks. I see that Sean is uh, raising their hand, so let me ask to unmute. See whether that works. Hi, yeah, thanks. Um, hey, hi, Hans and everyone. Um, I've got two questions. Uh, the first is: Is it valid to go in the other direction? using the uh, implementation guide. So from fire to V2. It probably will give you a good idea uh, that if you, uh, but you're gonna have some of these kind of questions. If I'm gonna go from an uh, OBX in V2, it might end up in an immunization or in an observation or in a pick a couple of other ones uh, because fire became more granular, less coarse, uh, less generic. Uh, so if you're sitting in immunization um, and you're looking at that, you're probably going to get a lot of, uh, in the right spot and say, oh, yeah, I, I got from OBX.5 
uh, or dot three into uh, uh, immunization dot code. Yeah, that's probably I can go back. Uh, but you might run into some um, uh, into some uh, um, vocabulary challenges. Yeah. If I have unknown on the uh, fire side, what is that on the V2 side? Uh, so you need to do some adjustments in the uh, vocabulary mapping, or you're going to go uh, that uh, uh, there are some conditions on the V2 side. So you just don't get 100% uh, uh, in the right spot. Yeah, That's the kind of challenge you have to look at. You have to work yourself through. Um, right. I, I, I thought you could just like write a reverser mapper and, and, and then we'd be, we'd be done. Um, that, will be <laughs> that was the dream. Yeah, um, second, you probably will get there 80, 90% uh, yeah. there because there's a lot of stuff that's just equivalent. Sure. Um, but uh, there is that pesky stuff that's just not going to fly. So the, the second thing would be more of a, a, of a ask or, or a wondering if, if it makes sense. Um, so the way that V2 implementation guide or, organized, it had concept maps and, and it had data types and it had segments and it had messages. And I love that. That all worked great. And I'm wondering if, if you could have a section that's just extensions that would make the act, that would make it so, you know, much more specific about what, what I need to use for the URL uh, and, and what the name, you know, uh, and, and then also the type of value um, uh, uh, string that we're or not string, but the type of value element that, that it would use. I'm just, it feels like, like that would be a, a nice artifact to have also in there, at least grouped that's, together. Yeah, that's a good idea. What we currently have as we're working through, uh, there is a extension proposal list is on the, from the uh, project page where we're working through all the different extensions that we have. Now, what I would expect is that once we have the extension actually in play, uh, that we have the opportunity that where we can have um, uh, uh, data type mapping, because we know what the data type is. Uh, and oh, this is the wrong one that I dragged across. Um, too many uh, windows open. Um, just try this one. So if we're looking at the data, uh, uh, map, data type mapping that would start to pop up here. Uh, and we're looking at an extension um, that, for example, we do that right here. We know right. that the extension patient disability is a codable concept. There might be a, uh, so at least we have this. And if there is a vocabulary map on the right hand side uh, uh, on fire, then we can go there. Uh, if there is none there, uh, then uh, Pretty sure, but I need to double check that our vocabulary mapping guidance indicates at that point in time uh, what the um, uh, uh, what the approach could be to just use the V2 uh, um, uh, vocabulary. It has yeah. Them, it has values, uh, and typically extensions are wow. not limited in their vocabulary. Some might, right. but not too many. That's nice. I don't. I don't that think helps. I'd seen that. Oh yes, I don't think I'd seen the vocabulary mapping. So that's also yeah, good, and we also good to do, know. Yeah, we also do assignments in here. That I'm not sure whether we have one in this particular map. No, but look there is that if we just know that's the value. Um, right. Oh, know, okay. Yeah. Variable so, or, or string that. or something else. We also Thank do concatenations that we're taking a couple of different components and string them together to create something that Fire and then can work with. Nice. Very nice. Any other questions? I see that uh, Dave, you still have your hand up. I'm not sure. Yeah, you have another question. Let me ask to unmute. Go ahead. Uh, yep, there you go. Uh, no, sorry. I just, I never <laughs> lowered my hand. So sorry okay. about that. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Christopher is uh, uh, raising his hand. Uh, let me go there. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of people that are commenting. Do you think you could just unmute everyone and let them unmute and talk? It's actually been pretty successful in some other discussions. It, basically, we can be pretty responsible for that. And the other part, I was gonna read a few of the Q&A for you since you don't have the uh, questions available. Um, one of the questions was, how can we get involved with the mapping project? Um, that one is, um, yeah, and I'm surprised that I don't see in Zoom the, uh, the chat that you apparently see. I'm just the Wolf is not happy with me right now. Um, but the uh, uh, getting involved uh, is a uh, couple of ways. 
you can go and go to the uh, um, implementation guide uh, that's, uh, that's currently sitting out there and you can uh, provide any kind of feedback uh, on that one. So if you go back to um, this one right here, uh, this is only so fast. There's the one. If you go to this uh, uh, link, uh, um, use that as your reference to enter JIRAs to your heart's content. So that's one way if you don't have time to attend the meetings or otherwise. Second way, you can attend the meetings. Those are Mondays and, uh, and Thursdays. Uh, if you go to the FIRE um, um, uh, conference call list, they are listed in there. They have the Zoom coordinates all in there. If you are not sure where they are, uh, in the uh, Zulip uh, V2 to Fire stream, drop a note, uh, uh, address it to me, uh, and I can drop the uh, uh, information in there as well if somebody's trying to find the coordinates and how to get in. If you have, if you have mappings that you say, hey, I, I got some mappings that I'm happy to contribute, um, would love to, uh, to get those um, that we can uh, extend or validate and see is that, uh, hey, what well, you have uh, indeed fits what we already have. So great, if you have to do something else, why are you doing it one way and why are we doing it another way? What's uh, What should be the right answer? And then work on that. Uh, at that point in time, uh, we would ask that then you would be very active uh, in identifying where your, your mapping is different uh, than the mapping that we have so far. The ones that we don't have a mapping for, that's pretty much going to be drop it in, run with that, and start to validate that. But the ones that are different, we'd love to know uh, uh, the rationale and then discuss that and see whether we need to enhance that. So those are the main ways to get involved. Okay. Um, next question is, is there an updated fire IG for lab orders and results? Um, if yes, could you provide links to the IGs? So um, I'm not sure how easy it is to get the links from the presentation you have here. When you go back to your agenda and go to the presentation under Q&A, if you could post some of the links there, people could reference that pretty easily. Yeah, and if you go here to, the, um, uh, uh, to this list um, and you go back to FIRE, uh, there is not at this point in time from a lab-specific IG perspective not much uh, that we have in fire, pure fire. We have V2 uh, implementation guides in lab, but we have not done the mapping from that specific HL7 V2 implementation guide for lab, lab orders, lab results, uh, test companion, uh, etc. We have not created one uh, for those to go to, uh, to fire. So we're first focusing on base standard to base standard. Not uh -huh. yet implementation guide too. Uh, but that would be a logical progression uh, to go there um, uh, uh, next. But uh, first we want to get this under our belt and with limited resources, that's as fast as we can go. Got it. And one other comment about going from fire back to the V2, you'd have to look at what required fields are of the V2 and make sure they map. That's just a comment on the side. Yeah, that's the same same in both directions is that you go to fire, you better have the, uh, uh, the field available which not, is not always available in V2. Um, uh, so the message doesn't have it, the segment doesn't have it. We, we have to put something there. Uh, and yeah, agreed, that's in both directions. And the last one was Gustav Vela was saying, can you please unmute? They can't. So if someone can unmute him, unless he's already yeah, asked so, the question. So that was just unmuted. So sorry, Great. apparently my Zoom crashed and then it's, I couldn't unmute anymore, so uh, I'm really, really sorry. So I actually do have one last question and that was the Hans, a really great talk. Um, so this one to many and many to one mapping. So if you are, for example, you've got ORC messages, um, they actually would map sometimes to service requests to practitioner. So if it's ORC 10, you would have a service request, ORC, um, another ORC message would usually map to the practitioner. So how do you deal with those cases? Uh, good question. That gets uh, tricky at times. Uh, um, there is partly that we're trying to derive it as much as possible from context. So do we go to a, a, a practitioner or do we go to practitioner role? 
Uh, if we don't have any other organizational information around it, so we're just going to go to practitioner. If we have some other information, we might go to practitioner role. So that's where the conditions come in. Um, uh, we um, uh, look at uh, uh, while fire may have multiple v2, the message is really about an order around an ordering provider, uh, a person we know where that needs to go. Uh, or if it is for a patient, it goes to the patient, it doesn't go to a group um, uh, because of the way that it's intended to be. Uh, but we also know is that in V2 is that uh, uh, a pit could represent a group, but we have no idea. We don't know what is doing that. So there is still a good amount of work that on imp uh, an implementer needs to do that you got a good chunk here, but depending on how you adjust it, added Z segments, use the field that you really were not supposed to use, but that seemed to be the right one at the time, uh, uh, or that's the only one you could negotiate with the other party, whatever the reason might be, no uh, value judgment on that, is that you have to go uh, through it yourself and figure out what it is. Uh, from a standard perspective, we can only define is that this is what the standard in V2 intended to be, and this is what FIRE intends to be. This is the be best match. Yeah, great. Um, so I think we're over time. Uh, really, thank you, Christopher, for taking over. Um, <laughs> um, Happy to help. So I don't know. I think we might have one last question, but uh, we're already five minutes over time. There is one more in Q&A that I saw, if no one else has one. Um, what are some of the most significant gaps or areas requiring extensions, perhaps, uh, that you have found particularly or use? Uh, so if we go to our extension list, um, I had it earlier, let's see whether I have that together. You can look at the extension list uh, uh, that I shared. I'm just trying to find among all the screens where is the one. I think I can get from here back. Um, um, uh, they're all over. Extensions are all over the place. Uh, they are in patient, they are in observations, they are in orders, etc. So there's no one particular area that jumps out that one is more significant than the other. Uh, it is just the case that FIRE, with its 80-20 rule, uh, is not addressing everything. So it's, and it's not even creating extensions for everything that V2 is already known to be using. Uh, so that's, that's generally more the, uh, the challenge. Um, the, the other challenge is that vocabulary mapping. Um, uh, we all know that on the V2 side, there are user-defined fields that have user-defined values um, uh, that uh, uh, include in the standard suggested examples or potential examples, and people use them. In FIRE, they're not necessarily uh, copied over. Um, uh, some of them are done um, handled differently. Uh, so those are the kinds of variances that as you start to dig into the respective areas, those are the areas where we spend the most time. Uh, the, uh, the vocabulary mappings, do we need an extension or not? Uh, and uh, other times you get into, well, I have an ID on the uh, HL7 uh, side, I unfortunately, I have a codable concept on the other side, or the worst, worst one is that I have a CWE on the left-hand side and I have a code on the right-hand side. That's all I have. Uh, I'm losing information potentially. I don't know what the code system is, but we then have to drop in uh, original uh, 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 code values to preserve the data. All right. Great. So I'm going to drop in to find my way back to Vova and see what happened. Uh, and I'm going to go jump into the uh, uh, questions there. I'll drop in a couple of links over there as well that people can pick it up there. You should get the, uh, the, um, the slides as I understand it. And then there are the links from PDF, they all should work. And if in doubt, the Zulip V2 to fire, um, you can reach me there at any time. Anytime that I will look at it. So that might not be midnight or three o'clock in the morning, but <laughs> okay. be the next day. Thanks a lot, Hans. And You're once welcome. again, once again, thanks to Chris. Take care. Have a great day. You too. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Bye. -bye.